David Lucas. And as you know, Skrill, if there's one thing that I hate in this world more than anything, it's when somebody makes me give them credit for being a truth teller and being a being on the uh, let's call it the edgy side of wor- the world. The fringe. The fringe. Yeah, yeah. The misfit. Exactly. Um, perfect. Perfect. Good. Good branding. Good branding. Um. And then they do something that makes me have to take it completely back. And this guy, this fucking coward, the weak sauce, pulls a bitch move. Now, in his apology, I guess there, there, there could be sort of a, I could shoot him some bail, but I don't think I want to. But let's play the apology. Okay. Now, let's just set it up real quick for anybody that doesn't know. David Lucas told a uh, off-colored. <laughs> That's a cho- choice words. Off-colored uh, joke about uh, George Floyd. That, that made uh, other coloreds leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> that made them off-colored. <laughs> <laughs> that colored off. Um and he caught some, you know, a little bit of hot water for it. I don't he, even think he caught anything crazy. He, he caught he caught a lot of flack. I he did. caught a lot of flack on, yeah. on on X. But again, it's fucking X. You can just turn off the app. You yeah, yeah. You have to be in it if it's getting to you know. Well, there was somebody that I want to get to later, mm. uh, Godfrey. Ah, who, Godfrey. Who kind of he didn't go too hard on David. We know why, because he's a fellow black comedian. That's I, the only reason. But I used to fuck with Godfrey, but he is woke as they come. He went completely off. The, he's almost like crazy how woke he is. Yeah. Like, he's legitimately losing his mind. It, it, it was, it, I, I uh, slowly, because I, I used to watch his Vlad interviews, but through the Vlad interviews, you would, you would pick up some things. You like, surmised it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This nigga's fucking woke. All right, let's listen to this fucking fool. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian David Lucas. Uh, you know me from Kill Tony and other various roast shows. Uh, I'm an edgy, uh, push the boundary comedian. And uh, my job as a comedian is to bring humor in dire situations. With that being said, there's a clip that is circulating around social media. And um, since that clip has came out, I have spoken to a lot of George Floyd's family. I spoke to Cal Wayne, Trey the Truth, Steven Jackson. And uh, my intention was to never cause harm to his family or make them revisit a moment that happened a few years ago. Uh, I'm a father, so I get it. I understand how his kids feel. I've spoken to his whole family and um, we've came, uh, you know, to an understanding as to how to move forward from this. And uh, just want to apologize to his kids and everybody who was close to him. Okay, so pretty much they said, shut the fuck up about George Floyd, bitch ass nigga, before we roll up on you and kill you. Before we make this a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were threatened. I get it. Okay. Basically, <laughs> you, it. it was probably the, the hey, your uh, comedy career is really nice. Be ashamed if something happened to it. Yeah, yeah. It's be, that, yeah. be ashamed if you lost... Uh, Half of your followers tomorrow. Uh, right, right. Mm. Um, the, the thing that bothers me is somebody who, who like promotes himself as an edgy, even I've heard him say he's anti-woke, right? To not be mentally prepared for a backlash that's like, like I, I have a feeling like this is what I think because this is what I do is I'm prepared for an inevitable backlash, inevitable backlash that's going to come from this show. Mm, I know mm, it's going to come. It's like, how do you not, if you're promoting yourself that way, how do you not prepare for that? Right. And not like understand even that like going out and apologizing is going to destroy your brand. Destroy your, yeah, and your credibility as a, as a a comedian that, that tells edgy jokes. You can't say that anymore. You can't call yourself edgy anymore. Can you? Nah. Now, this is where I can give him a little bit of levity, right? Is that he didn't apologize to... He only apologized to the family Mm -hmm. and not to everybody else that was offended. When they throw that line in there is where I think they fucking truly tuck their tail between their legs. Okay. But I don't think... 
I don't think the family was worth apologizing to. You niggas, you Me know. Me neither. Everybody in your family, you know the nigga in your family that's a nigga. Like, come on. You know, you what, know, time, you know what, what time yeah. it is. So, I mean, you know, it's somebody that they lost. Sure, I get it. You're never going to see him again. But at the same time, everything that happened from his death and him being propped up on this level of godhood just makes no sense. To where he can't be joked about? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's blasphemy now to joke about him. We have to yeah, apologize. I said it last week. He's Jesus. That's crazy. Yeah, he's that's crazy. Well, that's Jesus. that's what that clip proved last week. Mm. Is that you can't even say it's like speaking about the Prophet Muhammad. Yes. A, you know, maybe a little less because they'll chop your fucking head off. You can't draw George Floyd. You can't. You can't draw a picture of him unless it's a mural. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and let's be real. Was his joke even really that? That hard? Because I, I don't was, live in that world where I that's was that. Was, honestly, I don't even think it was that like that funny. The, it was the, funny the in the part, sense that it was shocking, the but it was like him, the part about him shooting him was funny. That part was funny. That part was funny. Yeah, and then yeah, where yeah. he says at the end, that nigga would have robbed you too. Yeah, yes, would have robbed all the L. Funny <laughs> jokes are rooted in a little bit of truth. The, a little bit of truth. If if you really look at what he did, the knee on the neck. Like joke that was actually the setup for the shooting for everything else that followed. Yes, like that wasn't even the punchline. That was more of like let me just draw out the fucking faggots and then, uh, uh, you know, now I'm gonna make the the punchlines because he's known for roasting. Mm -hmm. But then the problem was is the next morning he's like, all right, I'm just gonna be a faggot myself. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to George Floyd's auntie, uh, who probably haven't hasn't talked to George Floyd in ten years, and now all of a sudden she gives a fuck about she, him. Now she cares about. He was her a baby. goddamn homeless crackhead That's when my he died. Baby. Fuck you. <laughs> he ain't did nothing. He ain't did nothing to nobody. I guarantee you that's where the conversation went, and he didn't like. He just kowtowed to it, like he mm. fell for the sad black woman, mm. the the act. And it's like they're literally doing that to they're doing it for the paycheck, for the bag. For the bag, yeah. George Floyd's family. Of course. Donations. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, come on. Getting people to apologize, that's a big part of it. That's part of um of that's that's the new black generational wealth. Somebody gets killed by the cops, you sue the city, and then you build foundations around that person's name, and then that's how your family gets money for the rest of the life. Right, yeah, right. That's, that's the new shit. Peter Ortiz, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe always says never apologize, and and that's important because he comes from Tony Hinchcliffe's from, yeah, kill crew. Tony, yeah. yeah. And what's crazy is they've said way way worse shit about like more helpless people on Kill Tony than this George Floyd joke, bro. I'm telling you, everybody. Everybody that's black hit him up and was like, bro, you're wrong. I'm telling you right now. And he knows every, like, and we, we, I'm even talking about the all deaf crew. I'm sure them niggas hit him up too because there's bad comedians in there. Like, yo, bro, he was over bounds for that. How could you talk about George Floyd like that and that? Like, you know what it was. They, they literally made fun of Ric Flair's dead son in front of him. You know what I mean? And he comes from that crew. And you're telling me the George Floyd joke, though, is the is going over the line. Yes. Oh, my God. We can't do that. Because Ric Flair's son is not an icon. Well, he's not an icon for racism. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm he's saying. just another dead white guy. Yes. <laughs> another dead I mean, colonizer. He, he is. Let's be honest. But another dead colonizer. But in their mind, yeah. George Floyd but, is just another dead black guy. Really? That's all it that's is. All. Niggas, niggas die every day, B. He's he's a dude that justifiably, I'd say. Well, no, no, he not even justifiably got killed by the cops. He overdosed. Fentanyl. He had uh, what was it? Three times the the lethal uh, dose. He's fentanyl? the world's most famous crackhead. But you can't say that. Can't that's bring not. that. You can't bring up the fentanyl as if that's not in the autopsy it's, report. It's Tyrone Bigums, <laughs> and then it's George Floyd. <laughs> And then the guy from Bump Fights. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's it. Yeah, he's that's. Hey, look, I I don't think I I don't think you could call him a a, a real comedian anymore. You know what I mean? Like all the greats never apologized for anything they said. P bad people were offended by Bernie Mac's jokes and fucking um, 
uh, what's his name? Uh, Ch- Chappelle and shit. Like, people get offended all the time, but the responsibility of a comedian is to not apologize for that joke. I'll, I'll give this, I'll, I'll make this uh, caveat. Unless you're legitimately sorry. You know what I mean? Like, if you're let's not say, doing it for pressure? Let's say it's a joke. Let's say he makes a joke about some celebrity or something and and it it doesn't even become a huge deal but that celebrity sees him and and makes a case of why he should be sorry and he goes you know what i actually i actually do feel i understand something now why i shouldn't have made that joke like if you actually do come to an understanding Mm. that's different but when it's based on political pressure and you give into the political pressure that's the problem especially in these times yeah. And don't again um and and I've said it before and and we, we I don't want to say we fell for it. We just put our stock in somebody that that was actually a coward. Well, listen, I mean, this like, is Like, but sorry, real quick. Yeah. I was just going to say is this is a great example of being careful who we who we put our stock behind as far as like we're we're actually there's people that know that saying shocking things there's an avenue for that Mm -hmm. but they don't realize that there's actually a whole thing attached to it stigma stigma. because it's not just saying shocking things anymore it's actually taking the righteous road now and telling the truth is the shocking stuff so that's why it's so important Mm -hmm. you get what i mean so if you're gonna pretend to be the shocking guy and the edgy guy but then when it comes to the, the thing, you, 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 he basically just proved that he was only doing it for the money, the fame. The fame, notoriety. It was nothing about the message of, I'm going to be shocking because it goes against the grain of the fucking establishment. Mm. He doesn't see it that way. That's how I felt. He's, that's how I felt when he first did it, you know? Right, Until right. Until the apology, so. And then you realize, like, oh, no, he's just, he was faking. Yep. He was faking. He was pretending to be one of us. It's probably as woke as they come, to be honest. Right, right. Somebody just called, but uh, that could have been Wonder. Was that Wonder? Wonder, you calling in? Is Wonder calling in? Holy shit. Hi, this is comedian David oh, Lucas. Uh, you- <clears throat> okay, let's get uh, let's see. Maybe Wonder wants to chime in on this. Hello, sir. You're calling into the Misfit Nation oh. podcast. You're talking to world famous Krishan the Don and Skrillkill. World yes, famous Skrillkill. How's this? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear us? Hey, yeah. First time, um, first time caller, long time listener. How's it going, guys? <laughs> We're good, man. Thanks for calling in. Um, uh, what's your name? What's your name? Uh, where you, where you calling? I go by Wonder. Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm I'm calling from Minnesota. Oh, little oh. Somalia. Little <laughs> yeah, Somalia world for real. Is it really cold like Minnesota? It really is. Is it cold like Minnesota? It is definitely 14 degrees. <laughs> wow, nice, nice. Yeah, good luck with that. All buddy. day. All right. So, what you what you got going but on? Baby? I did want to call in to chime in on this topic here. Please. Go um, ahead. I I actually disagree with you, Krishan, about apologizing at all. It's fucking comedy. It's the biggest freedom of speech platform job that you could actually have. If you can't take the heat, get out the fucking kitchen, bro. No, I, I, I agree with that. My, my point was that if you actually like, if you're actually sorry for something, then you should never be ashamed for being, for apologizing for something. If you're actually sorry. If you're actually sorry. Well, okay. But in this case, apology in general, that's what I'm saying though. In this case, actually being sorry means you're a fucking homo <laughs> you get what i mean yeah that's what fucks him up is is i can't respect him actually being sorry about this i don't think any comedian that has to come out after making a statement and publicly apologize means it it's all for their campaign it's probably their fucking peer someone telling them to do that it's clean up yeah it's cl- it's definitely pr yeah, it's clean yeah. Up. definitely clean up right and what's crazy is is a lot of people were going into this thing when they were defending him, uh, where they were like, see, he's a guy who's just independent. He could say whatever he wants. And it's like, well, maybe... Maybe he can't. 
Maybe he can't. <laughs> or he's just choosing that if he is an independent dude. But I think a lot of people also are faking independence oh, because yeah. they know that's a selling point as well. 100%. You're only independent until you're about to get canceled. Right, mm. right. Then you got to fall back on resources or somebody or something. I feel like but he- for this case, it was actually a funny joke. It's George Floyd by by God, and this nigga's not a mortar to no community. Right. It's just a regular human that just got joked upon. I feel like he could have he could have really if he stuck to his bridges, he could have really blown up off of that. Like just off the fact that he told the joke and wasn't sorry about it. Like that would have Yeah, he would have lost a, a a a little bit of the black audience, but I think a lot of black people would have still rocked with him. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I don't think I think uh, I saw a lot of people in the comments uh, defending him. Yeah, that were black. Tony, I know right? they were black because the comments were misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> they spelled uh, they spelled uh, D A T. He's on Kill that. Tony, right? Yeah, yeah, he's on Kill Tony. Bro, no black person watches Kill Tony. Relax. I watch Kill Tony. No black person watches Kill Tony. <laughs> No FBA is watch watch Kill Tony. There you go, no, there you go, bro. There you go. Yeah, you're no right. No FDA watches it. They get offended by the jokes anyway on Kill Tony. You weren't even in the crowd. It wasn't your crowd, so who gives a fuck? I understand if you were in attendance and then you felt some type of way about the jokes given, but it's Kill Tony for Pete's sake. Yeah. You should know it's going to be a bunch of shot-dropping jokes, and it's usually white humor. Well, he wasn't. I, he wasn't on Kill Tony when he said that joke. He was at the. He was at some. No, no. But the thing comedy. is, is that he's known as that guy. He's not. It's almost yeah. like um, Jeff Ross uh, apologizing for making fun of somebody. It's like, bro, you're a roaster. You're Jeff that's, Ross. You're, that's, that's what you do. You're the king of roasting. It's I like t- I took it too far. Yeah, there is no taking it too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I definitely see where you're coming from, Wonder. Definitely agree with that. 